This is Rod with Tabletop Basketball Board Games. Good afternoon. This is another experimental game I have never played before. Uh, just going to do a little unboxing, a little review. Uh, once again, similar to uh, the PTG game he uh, offered to send me in January, uh, Kevin Hennessy of our tabletop group in, on Facebook mailed out a game uh, I had not seen for sale or in circulation for a long time. It's Big League Manager Basketball. It's a Big League Manager series. They've got baseball and football games uh, developed during the 1960s and maybe all the way to approximately 1980. Uh, this is the basketball incarnation of their game. This is actually a later version. They originally had, this is what the original um, game instructions look like in black and white. They have, it was actually a blue colored brochure and they give you this and you say, wow, look, big league manager basketball. So um, they had some uh, master game boards with the original game. I was not uh, given those, but I wanted, but um, I've been giving, been provided with what you can see over here as optional charts and you can actually play the game with a, these charts, which are apparently a lot more simplified uh, than the original game boards. I mean, here's an original look inside the instructions. This is just my printout on my printer of what the uh, original game cards look like if you had your little score sheet set up and you'd get these, you know, this little matchup between the Warriors and the Cincinnati Royals somewhere in the 1960s. I don't know who this Montgomery guy is. I think that's just a sample guy they're using a lot. But they had Guy Rogers, so it's probably the early to mid 60s Warriors. And, uh, you know, the, the, the Royals, they were kind of the same the entire decade with uh, Oscar Robertson, Jack Twyman. Uh, it could be before Jerry Lucas, so we could be looking at 1962, 61, or 60 here. Um. Anyhow, that's how they looked back then. Uh, what we're going to look at is part of the package that Kevin awarded me with, which was such a nice thing to do. Uh, <clears throat> it is the 1976 edition of these cards, and there are some optional rules. They've made the game a little bit more streamlined, and they've added a couple features which were missing from the earlier game. I don't know a lot about this. I've just read it over for a few hours last night. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, these... Uh, New rules, um, <clears throat> the old cards um, never really took into account uh, foul drawing um, by individual players, which is always a factor. Um, assists were always, a little, I think, a little bit more of an ap <clears throat> afterthought. And um, so, yeah, I think they've added a couple little things that'll help because uh, you used to have just a foul, uh, like for Twyman here, a foul six, so you got your ability to foul or not foul on defense. You're also got a defensive rating like say M1, that's minus one for an open or guarded shot, O and the G. Um, if you can read that, that's Al Adels. Um, if he's open, you, you basically are working the ball around to get a guy an open shot. And so there's a little bit of a passing mechanic in this and a ball handling mechanic in this I don't think it's overwhelming though. There was, looking at some old all sports uh, magazines by Keith, uh, there's not a lot of negative reviews about this. It just takes a little bit of time. It's a, a time consuming game. And as I said, the earlier seasons, uh, they did not really take into account drawing fouls and things like that. And you will see in the 75, 74, 75 season, 1976 edition, I will be presenting today uh, a couple differences that uh, are enhancements and all, we have optional charts. We don't have the original game charts. So let's break open this package. The only thing I've removed from this package is this one board right here. And the, as you can see, the board has got an, a one through 50 um, rolls. And it looks like you can do uh, two, roll two dice at one time. I've got a couple 50 sided dice I've got right here. These are cool guys. I, I enjoy playing with these things. They actually are pretty, solid and easy to read and they don't take forever to um, come up with a, a number. It doesn't take forever to roll, unlike my 100-sided die, which is very difficult to read. So here we go. 
1974-75 NBA. And here we start with the Kansas City Omaha Kings. You can see here there's Nate Tiny Archibald. On the free throw column, they've got an A for Nate next to his 41 making ability, which re is revealing that it shows that he takes the ball to the, to the rack quite often, and he will draw more fouls than your typical uh, NBA player. So let me try and get that even closer. So you compare that with, say, Jimmy Walker, another good shooter. But Jimmy has a 40D, which means he will not draw the foul as quickly on a certain result. For instance, you look under the shooting column here, 34 and 35. Um, if you're an A drawer, it's, it's different than a B, C, and D. The number gets higher, and every player has a foul rating. So if, if it's a heavy fouler, that D shooter might get a free throw, but if it's a non-heavy fouler, uh, a regular player that like a JoJo White or something, he might only have a, a 1 or a 3. He's not going to draw the foul on certain certain players that don't get to the line as often. So that's a nice little characteristic they added. Uh, once again, they still have the open and the guarded shooting slots. So um, if it's guarded, you take a defensive uh, rating from the defender. Let's just guess. Let's say Kansas City's playing Houston. And Jimmy Walker has a guarded rating of 22. And you go to the defender. His defender, let's say, is Calvin Murphy. Calvin Murphy is an M3 defense. So just a straight-out shot by Jimmy Walker's uh, guarded 22 would only be a 19. And so you're, it's part of the roll of the dice, 1 through 50. And say I rolled a 27, and that'd be a missed shot. You go after the rebound using the rebound chart over here. And the next thing you know, the other team's on its way with a a defensive rebound or a fast break or a foul on the rebound. The, the rebound chart's got a variety of uh, the TIRB, which perplexed me forever, TIRB. That is a tip-in rebound. So all players are rated for tip-in ability or offensive rebound baskets. A guy like a big guy like Ron Behagen has a one. Uh, let's take a look and see what a superstar has like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar also known as uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabber in this <laughs> card. His tip-in rating is 2. So that's a good tip-in rating because you can see a 0, 0, 0, 0. There's a 1 for Cornell Warner on the offensive board. So not a lot of great rebounding there. Um, other than that, what else did they work? What else did they add to this season? Um... Everybody's got a foul rating, as I mentioned before, F5, F7. There's also uh, added is a block and a steal rating. So those characteristics are kind of general, but they at least represent whether these guys steal or not. Like Mickey Davis has a nothing in that column. Uh, the block ranges from just a B to a B1. Abdul-Jabbar is a B2. I remember George Johnson on my Golden State Warriors. Let's see, there's Los Angeles. There's Golden State. And Georgie has a foul 10, which is extremely high. But he has a block of three. So Georgie's going to swat some shots. And that particularly falls into play when you're looking at shooting numbers 11 through 20. And uh, a B3 on a 12 block center. Yes, George Johnson would get that block shot. The weirdest thing is there's a lot of... Um, deviating from the player cards is a lot of asterisk number results. So I uh, decided to go to the optional rules, which I got from Kevin as a PDF. And all the optional asterisk rules are right here and right here. Um, why they didn't put them in this column on the board or type them right next to where the result was, it looks like there's plenty of room. It's a mystery to me, so... I'm going to make a bigger chart for that and put that next to 
you know, where the jump ball is, how many times you jump ball, pretty much once per quarter. And then maybe over here on 24, there's a jump ball opportunity. So it's interesting, uh, a totally different setup than I've, I've seen in many other games. Uh, the timing mechanism is also uh, an interesting one. Um, not impressive to begin with, but it's, it's six seconds per ball handle or rebound. Um, so it's like six, 10 plays per minute. So that'll be what, 120 plays per quarter, which is a little bit, a um, little bit extensive. Um, that's 480 plays per game. Uh, I might start by playing a game with um, the good old PTG shots per quarter mechanism just to just to keep the numbers down. Um, there's just, uh, that'd be only 200 versus 480 as far as shots, missed field goal attempts and made field goal attempts and see how that works for 74, 75. I'll adjust it based on the number of field goal attempts per game these teams played, which was starting to, to go down into the early 90s, 91, 92 field goal attempts per team per game. So we'll see how that works. I might change up the timing. That's probably the only thing I would. There are fast breaks. If steals or rebounds occur, uh, one of the asterisks, I think asterisk number two here, it starts the uh, a steal and if the ball handle dribble, there's a two on one fast break, which instantly ups the ball handling characteristic, which means a lot for a guy like a Rick Barry. Uh, once again, here's my glowing Rick Barry moment since he is a tremendous player. He was fourth in league MVP voting because no one liked his guts, but he was uh, obviously the best all around player in the NBA in 1974 75. The Warriors finished first and upset the Washington Bullets in four straight games in the finals. So Rick got the MVP of the playoffs. So anyway, you can see Rick is pretty good in every category. Amazingly uh, better than you even think. He's got a um, 23 for ball handling. He's got a minus nine for defense. They really loved his defense. And uh, free throws are 42C, which C is not a great... Uh, foul drawing, but uh, he also just shot a lot. So he's got a uh, a B on block and an S for steal. There's S and T characteristics for steal. A couple players I noticed had an S and a T. So it'd be interesting to see how this works out. Those things will come up um, with all the asterisk numbers, which I, once again, I don't know why they're hiding, buried into this uh, this optional rules category, but they are extremely important. It looks like they play a role in about, you know, uh, 30%, 40 to 50% of the shooting plays and uh, and also in ball handling, also in rebounds, there's asterisks all the way up and down. And the asterisk things can range from anything uh, from tipping rebounds to stolen to three-point shots for the ABA, things like that. But anyway, let's continue to take a look at these cards. Um, there's the Warriors. This is the uh, Lakers pre, uh, pre Kareem Abdul Jabbar, post Jerry West and Wilt Chamberlain, 1975. Not a great year. I don't believe this Warrior, this Laker team made the playoffs. Uh, the Bucks, uh, despite having the great Kareem Abdul Jabbar, they might have made the playoffs. Let me think 74 75. I'm not sure if they even made the playoffs this year. Or was this the year they made the playoffs with a terrible record? They might have made it with like 38 wins. But either way, they were on their way out, and Kareem was on his way out to Los Angeles within a year. Uh, there's the Rockets, always good shooting. You can see Rudy T there. He's a... I'm trying to look for a guy who draws fouls. There's Calvin Murphy. He's got a B. See, none of the prior... Uh, BLM, Big League Manager Basketball Games, had that. And uh, they start to eliminate that again for their 77 edition. I don't see it. No, no, they don't. Yeah, you can see their 77 edition chart. This is 76 edition. I got a 77 chart from Kevin here. And they still have characteristics for foul drawings. They didn't lose that, but I do see a lack of block shots. They kind of combine all the shooting, uh, 6 to 50. Let's go for the rebound versus this chart. Um, 
or 76 edition, 11 through 20 is a big deal with block shots. 35, 36, they got tip-in rebounds and everything. So I'm trying to figure out why they changed everything for 76, 77. I think they changed the whole game up a bit. Uh, to, oh yes, and by comparison, I just wanted to show you the size of this board. Is a, a bifold board came like that, or like that. And it's basically a little bit wider than the floor play chart for PTG basketball, which is a very simplified two-sided board. This is just a two-fold single board. Uh, but anyway, the cool part about this deal with Kevin, I'm not going to go through every single one of these teams. You first, you get the NBA, and then I pop open this divider here, and suddenly I notice that the ABA also came with the uh, BLM 75. 74-75 season, so another bonus here. This is just incredible to get, you know, bonus. Let's take a look at one of the best players in the league, George McGinnis. George has a 34A on free throw, so he draws a ton of fouls. I think he averaged 29.8 in his last year in Indiana. The Pacers just did not have the money to keep him, and the 76ers signed him to a million bucks the following year. And uh, he had his best years in the ABA with the Pacers. Um, he shoots threes a little bit. That's a 16 three-point and a three-point open, three-point guarded. It's only a one-point difference there, but guarded can be. I don't think guarded is impacted by, well, it must be impacted by defense if it's guarded. If it's open, no. So anyway, he's got a B for a block, S for a steal. He was a great stealer. Rebound of 21, probably led the league in that. Ball handling of 18 doesn't really have um, individual player turnovers. And George was a big turnover guy. He probably turned the ball over five times a game, <laughs> you know, while playing 40 minutes a game. Um, but uh, he, he did pretty much everything else pretty well. You know, th this is a guy like a, a Don Boozy. You know, he's going to have a D for free throw drawing, but he does the defense as well as anyone. He's got the ST on steel, uh, defensive rating minus four. So he's like, you know, pretty all league defender to see that M9 on Rick Barry that was quite shocking. I haven't seen anything like that. Well, you got a defender like Wayne Pack by contrast who's got a P4, which means you add four points to anyone's uh, he's he's guarding, so he's a he's a little bit of a liability, although he does has a steel T on that. So, anyway, that's yeah, we got the full assortment of ABA as well. Here we got um, what else do we have here? Here's the New York. Nets, the la one of the last years, Dr. J. You can see in the upper right corner. Um, is that visible? Oh, there he is. Um, Irving. Good on steals and blocks. Good on rebounds. Pretty much good on everything. Good ball handler as well. So he can dish out assists. You get assists through... Um, through a, a ball handling uh, characteristic, you you, you basically uh, throw if you get a roll, say a. We'll just put it on a number within Irving's range, and the defense actually, if you're being guarded, you use the defensive characteristic of someone to erase, to subtract, or add to the ball handling as well. Irving, say I got a 16 as ball handler, 17. Which is good because that means he can you you pass to an open man if he successfully handles the ball, and there's an open man chart right over here. Just an interesting format here. I'm trying to show you the ball handling right there, and you roll again with a second die. So I have a white die and a black die, and you can see who gets the ball as an open man, and he'll have an open open shot. So and if that shot goes in, you register an assist for Dr. J. So that's why a Dr. J or a McGinnis or a Nate Archibald or some other point guard like Boozy will have a high ball handling rating. They can get assists. Boozy's got an 18. And so and so on and so on. Here's M Artis Gilmore, defense minus four. I think Kentucky was the champions of 74-75. They were... Uh, Quite a group with Issel and Gilmore. I don't think Issel had his greatest year. I think he was only around 17, 18 a game, but he was still, he was still Dan Issel. He could still shoot the shoot the ball. He had a good playoffs, I think. But uh, you can see, like Louis Dampier has a foul of one. 
which means he, he's not going to draw many fouls at all or make many fouls at all. <clears throat> and then you get a guy like Artis who draws a lot of fouls on the offensive side, 33A. And so Artis will draw a plenty of fouls. So anyway, you move through Memphis, St. Louis, the rookie, Marvin Bad News Barnes, who's, um, what's his defense? Plus two. So he's kind of a absent on defense, even though he has a block one as well. So it kind of counters. He's probably an average defender as a, a young rook for them. Maurice Lucas is a rookie. What a good rookie crop. The ABA just stole these from the players from the NBA that year. So anyhow, there's George Gervin, San Antonio, San Diego. Discovered by the Germans. No, sorry. Um, Caldwell Jones. Yep, Caldwell up there. Played a long time in the NBA. The Utah Jazz, the young rookie named Moses. Malone in the upper corner there. Moses, B1, rebound 23, free throw 30A, which means he, I think he, that means he just hits 60% from the foul line, but he gets to the line a lot, so he's going to get his man in foul trouble. The TIRB is a two, which means he'll tip in rebound baskets when that's available. Uh, defense E, even. Okay, I get it. I get it. I'm learning as I go. So Gerald Govan usually was one of the best defenders in the league. He's got a minus four. So to see Rick Barry with a minus nine is just mind-boggling to me. I don't. I haven't seen anything close. So I'll have to try to find another defender that, like, you know, Fatty Taylor. Not minus four. I see a lot of minus fours. That's about it. But Barry to have a minus nine, that makes absolutely no sense. In addition to the top ten guys on each team, uh, this season came with some extras. Fringe players. And, yeah, so the Warriors have Bill Bridges on their bench. Harvey Catchings joins Philadelphia. Not necessarily too many pivotal players. A young Kermit Washington right there. Um, but just a whole host. To get the fringe players and have that 11th man available, someone gets hurt or you're disappointed with one of your regular guys. And then, of course, the ABA has a smaller league. There's Don Adams. For St. Louis, I think he came over after the uh, Pistons just waved him after 51 games. That made no sense. Dave Bing was quite upset with that. Uh, you got Wendell Ladner, who always gave 100%. The man died tragically in a plane crash. And uh, could have been during the 74-75 season. I'm not certain, but that's that was a tragedy of the, of the year. Bernie Fryer. Yeah, a lot of good old... You know, Bruce Seals, Willie Wise. I think Willie just got hurt. Uh, where's his game? 16. Yeah, I think he, I think he was hurt, but he, I think he did a good, was a good player when he played. But anyway, there you have it. That's uh, big league manager basketball. You won't find this anywhere. I'm, I've checked eBay. I've checked other things. I don't know where it came is came from. So, thank you, Kevin, for providing this game. I do want to play a game of this. I think I figured it out somewhat. But it's going to be experimental. It's unlike any game I've really seen before. It's a little more uh, rating and statistic based, but there's modifiers, like I said, uh, defense, uh, just like a status pro, plus or minus, foul drawing characteristics, block and steal characteristics. So it's got a lot of the new, the newer modern inventions, yet. It still has some things it could work on, but uh, at the same time, it's it's an interesting game. I'm so pleased to have had the opportunity to look at it, and now I've got a whole season of cards here. Um, I got to figure out who I want to play. So anyway, thanks for watching this video, and uh, we'll catch up to you later.